All right, so um, let's see. Yeah, we already got people mm -hmm. tuning in, so I'm just going to go ahead and start it. For anyone that just joined us, uh, welcome. Um, not really too much of a name for this um, in particular, but um, today we are going to be doing an interview with uh, the commission himself, uh, Mr. Uh, McDonald. Just changed his gamer title to LG McDonald. How's it going, man? I'm doing really, do really good, man. Uh, yeah, quick gamer change there. Uh, um, definitely with NHL 17 dropping. There's people, new players and stuff, interests about LG, so... Quick change to my gamer tag just to promote the website a little bit more. So uh, when I'm talking to brand new players and new prospects, at least we can point them in the right direction. So, yeah. Yeah, man, for sure. And today we'll be talking about the uh, brand new league coming to LG for the NHL 17 game dropping out in just a matter of days, the LG ECHL. So we know we were going to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, I would definitely want to uh... – I want to touch on some changes that we're going to see for season 25 and moving forward for the CHL, uh, as well as what the EC ECHL means to us for LG. Uh, once we're completed this video, I'm going to put together a pretty lengthy post, obviously link our videos to discussion. So it gives our viewers options to listen and read along. Uh, so everyone gets information about how the changes are really going to affect uh, the CHL and the ECHL as we move forward in season 25. All right, so I know that there's a lot of questions around the ECHL, like how it's going to work, uh, is it going to be affiliation? So let's just kind of start with the basis. Um, sure. I know a lot of people have been asking this that are interested. When will there be a management forum for the uh, ECHL coming up? I know a lot so, of people have been asking that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my plan is is tonight or early tomorrow, uh, we're going to start taking ECHL management uh, applications. Um, the biggest thing right now is obviously uh, the ECHL is going to be very heavily dependent on uh, the signups that we have for uh, amateur players as well as veteran players. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't mean we can't get started and we can't get uh, some managers in place who want to know, maybe move up from the CHL, maybe move down from the AHL, and vice versa. So we'll see. So management applications for this new league uh, will be either open tonight or it'll be opened uh, early tomorrow. Okay. And just for uh, anyone that doesn't really know too much about the ECHL, they haven't way through then. What's going to be like the basis of the ECHL, like the, just kind of like the base of the whole plan, the blueprint over there? Sure. So uh, the ECHL in NHL 17 right now, uh, there's currently 27 teams. So the maximum we could actually go with is 26 just due to our scheduling. Uh, we may we may dabble with the 27 a little bit uh, with anticipation of us going to 31 NHL teams for NHL 18 uh, once Vegas has their team. Correct. Uh, yes. We have some pretty cool. We have some pretty cool ideas uh, how we're going to be able to schedule with an odd number. Uh, it's something we haven't done before. And having the ECHL with a maximum of 27 teams will give us an opportunity to test our theories and test out our scheduling system. Uh, so for moving into season 25, we'll have a maximum of 25 teams. Uh, the management selected will be able to select their team. I normally do like a randomized draft system where I uh, put you guys in order, randomly distribute, then you guys get to select uh, within the order that I give you. Um, so you'll be able to pick your team from there. So we'll have one ECHL team that doesn't make the cup this year. Um, so that's essentially how team selections will be for this. Uh, so maximum 27 teams is what we're looking uh, for this first season. Um, yeah. All right, so um, that's also another question that kind of brings up with the CHL. Obviously, we had uh, 60 teams, Seattle coming out on top. Congratulations to them. Um, how, how is that going to affect the CHL? I mean, depending on the sign-ups or 60 teams, would that number obviously go down, or what would be the plan for the C? How would that impact it? So the way we're looking at it right now is we're – um, instead of going tiered all the way down, everyone looks at the league as a tier, right? So, you know, NHL, AHL, CHL. We're looking to go NHL, AHL, ECHL, CHL. So keep them on a relatively same level, but give a better ex explanation to the community what the differences are going to be. Um, so, for example, um, prospect players that we're, you know, we know and love are going to be CHL players only. So brand new guys that join LG uh, will be in the CHL, in CHL bidding, what you guys are used to. Um, that gives our new CHL managers an opportunity to recruit uh, new members, new players, friends who haven't joined LG yet to go to CHL bidding. It gives them that level of comfort, gives them the ability to build their team. Um, then on the ECHL side, that's going to be our, our lower tier that's tied to the AHL and NHL, but it will also give our veteran players and our amateur players an opportunity to play um, in, a, in a tier that's lower, but that also gives them an opportunity to move up to the AHL. Uh, so in a nutshell, what we're going to do is we're going to take our CHL and we're going to separate it completely. So we'll put the CHL over here. It's going to be its own brand new league, uh, no affiliation to NHL, AHL, which gives, you know, a lot of comfort, a lot of stability, a lot of, uh, it creates its own environment, which will actually be able to 
uh, keep our managers together to be able to uh, train you guys better, train our players better, and really build for the future, which is something that we really want to do. And then the ECHL, we'll take and we'll plug it in, uh, sort of how the CHL is right now, where it'll be part of the affiliation. Um, ECHL players will actually have their rights assigned to AHL training camps for call-up purposes, for ECU purposes. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now uh, in regards to ECHL and CHL. So most people, when they think about the whole system, they're thinking, you know, we're going to bump the CHL down a tier and plug the ECHL in as our third tier. Uh, that's not really, in my opinion, how we're looking at. We're looking at them on the equal page um, that have, there's two different options. And the options really come into play, which we'll discuss uh, shortly as well. Okay, so um, I know this is probably going to be a question running through the um, managers that are coming up to the ECHL's mind, but uh, how will TCs work over there? Would they just consume of like all of the prospects in the CHL, or like how would that so work this, necessarily? So this is how it's going to be, which is pretty neat about it. So uh, <clears> having the ECHL and CHL in the same kind of tier, um, it all depends on signups. So we're, we've tweaked the signup system a little, little bit. Uh, I have a screenshot that I'll post later on in my thread. But essentially, when you sign up to for LG right now for the league, um, there's a question in the sign-up that's mandatory that you answer. And the question asks you if you wish to go to ECHL bidding or CHL bidding. But I think it just says ECHL or CHL. So as a player, um, maybe you're a veteran player, uh, you'll have to make that decision when you sign up. So if you click ECHL and the season's running, you'll be randomly assigned to an ECHL training camp. If you pick CHL, you'll be randomly assigned to a CHL training camp. So that's how it works from there. It keeps everything going. So that's our plans for right now. Okay, and I know that's probably something that's been going through a lot of players' minds with the EC. Like, if I go through, I sign up, I get passed through the N and the A. What happens? Do I go through the E or do I go to the C? I know that's a no, lot. Of, I know that's really what's been running through a lot of players' minds for the most part. So that definitely mm-hmm. helps to clear that up. Yeah, you know, for sure. There definitely, there's a ton of questions that people are asking and people are uh, kind of dealing with. So that's kind of, that's what we're looking at right now. Just give me one second, okay? Yeah, for sure. Um, um, also, um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Ask the next question. Yeah. Um, also, by the way, I'm just going to cut in here. If any of you guys have any questions for Brody, feel free to PM it to me on the uh, site if you want to ask any questions for anyone that's watching. But um, anyways... Yeah, I mean, not only that, but I mean, the ECHL, it kind of gives the league a whole new element. I mean, how do you think it impacts the site? It's kind of almost like a, it's, it really embodies the virtual career concept a lot. Um, how do you think it does? Uh, I think the biggest thing is we're looking at, like, we have so many players every year, you know. We end up with, uh, I think last season we had 2,800. Season before that was just over three grand. So having numbers in that sense, you know, when we add that additional tier, it gives more opportunity for people to actually play and enjoy it, which is kind of huge. Um, with the NHL 17 playing a lot better than what it actually, what 16 did, uh, there's lots of opportunity for growth. That's kind of why we've added that extra tier to give more people an opportunity to actually play and enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. And that's the greatest thing about it. I mean, it's competitive. It's kind of in between the AHL and the CHL. And I feel like the greatest thing is it kind of has its own identity for the most part. Like it's not the same as the A, but it's not the same as the C. It's just its own thing. That's the really cool part about it. Yeah, I think overall right now what we're looking at is we've, we've come to a point, especially this season for the CHL, you know, uh, we've come to a point where we're, we're, we've created three identities already, right? We have our top tier NHL, that's its own identity. We have our AHL, which is its own identity. And the CHL this season having 60 teams and the, the competitive level that it actually had this season, I think the CHL really uh, pulled itself away, and pulled itself to the side and really made itself its own brand. Um, I was really happy to see that. I think that these changes out in the ECHL is only going to make that better for the CHL as well, too. You know, we're going to, excuse me, when know, Zeno and I were talking, we're going to be adding things like contracts and resigns and uh, to the CHL to give you guys opportunities to build teams as you progress through your CHL career. Uh, and so you can gain eligibility to be, go to the ECHL or go to the AHL, right? So those are some concepts and things that we're looking at right now. Um, I think the CHL took uh major major strides forward this year i think that really gave me a lot of faith and a lot of hope that this new idea is actually gonna we're gonna be able to accomplish a lot with the echl not only for itself as the echl but for the chl as a whole like i'm i'm equally as excited to bring the new league in as i am to give the chl uh its own environment where it can thrive more than it ever has before yeah for sure and that's the even great part about it is how much it's expanded and i know you mentioned uh mentioned this and i think maybe some people will probably be interested um how is there any idea on what the staff will be or who will be staff because i know zeno's uh owning up in the or not owning but he's um 
commissioner up in the EC. How will that work uh, on a staff kind of thing, if anyone's interested in that? Um, that's a good question, too. So right now, uh, I know we talked about this last night. So I think uh, Zeno, Titus, and I are just going to kind of uh, we'll maintain the commissioner role and handle questions at that lo- at level. And we'll probably add a couple additional BOG to handle uh, the everyday site work from there. Um, it's a good opportunity for us to bring in new people, new faces who want to give staff a try and for us to really figure out if we can bring someone who wants to be long-term. Um, if you notice, you know, staff doesn't change very often. I like to keep the same people in the same positions. You know, Zeno's done a great job with the CHL uh, for many, many, many seasons. I think having him in that role, uh, really helps the CHL thrive and grow. That's one of the biggest reasons why uh, we might not bring a commissioner in for season one uh, for ECHL, but we're definitely gonna look, we're looking for the right people that want to you know, stick into the long term uh, so we can continue building the brand and building the, that type of relationship that we have with our managers. So uh, right now, BOG applications, uh, we'll probably open those uh, sometime early this week as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you kind of touched on the um, kind of odd number of teams. I know we just had some people uh, tune in. Uh, welcome to whoever just started watching. Um, what's going to be the plan for um, the odd amount of teams? And I'm assuming it'd be 28 teams once Vegas comes in 18, like you said. Um, what's going to be the plan? Will just a team be cut off from the people that aren't chosen? Will you have 26 or uh, how would that yeah, work? I know that affects like standings and divisions and playoffs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, so our, our game plan was we're probably we'll run with a maximum of uh, a maximum of 26 this season. Uh, so there'll be one team that's in the game that we're not going to utilize. Uh, that's just for season 25. Uh, this really takes off and grows and gets big. Uh, we could potentially look at going to a 27th team uh, come season 26. Uh, so we'll just see how the first season goes with having an ECHL and um, get over the hiccups and over the bumps in the road, and then we'll kind of go from there and reevaluate at the end of the season and see what we can do moving forward. Yeah, for sure, and. You know, and that's another thing that you also have to kind of interpret because I know, like, in the real EC, you know, you have the affiliations, but you can't really have that with the not the same amount of teams that there are in the A in the end, which is kind of the thing that, you know, kind of drawbacks from it. Because I know a lot of people were asking that as well, like, would there be affiliations or not, or this, that, and the other. Um, yeah, that's that's a really – you made a lot of valid points there. So direct affiliation, uh, I have a lot of experience with direct affiliation. We use it in VHL for the CHL, and uh, my personal thoughts on direct affiliation is it just – it's a really difficult system to manage. You know, it either it's either really, really great or it's not great at all. And unfortunately, the teams mm. that suffer are the lowest tier. Um, to help a league grow and expand, um, direct affiliation makes it difficult. That's why I feel like when we went away from direct affiliation for the CHL, it took us only – I guess, six seasons um, for us to get to where the CHL is right now, right? Uh, If we were direct affiliation, we may not have seen the stability and the the support there to get the CHL to where it is today. Um, So you are very, it's very true, you know, not having the same amount of teams is a huge issue for direct affiliation. Mm -hmm. So, and we we have a pretty good random assignment system, right? No, we have a system that auto assigns uh, Mm -hmm. sporadically, randomly to distribute across the AHL. So um, if you're an AHL team, only has like one or two of your players and they're having a bad season and they require those two players, it doesn't completely deplete your roster. And there has been situations that I've personally dealt with and personally seen uh, where direct affiliation can completely deplete the lower tier, which causes issues. And no, if you're a manager in the ECHL, and you lose all your players and you're the best team in the league, it becomes a really, really frustrating situation. And it makes management not nearly as appealing as, um, as what you know you could hope for, right? So that's one reason why we're not going direct affiliation because I truly believe it's it's not the correct system and it's not the, the most functioning system to actually require to give the ECHL the the you know the league it needs. Mm-hmm. Um, this might excuse me if this is like a premature kind of question, but what would be the rule book for the ECHL for the most part? I mean, the CHL and the AHL. It's similar, but it's not similar. Like, it's kind of a bit of a difference. Would it be kind of like a mixture of that? Or because I know a lot of managers are kind of wondering that there are people that want to go up to the EC. So, what would be like the ground base of rules over there? One second. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, um, I think we'll probably go with a similar. Uh, I'm at the fire hall right now. We just got a page. I don't have to go. I was just listening to see what it was. But um, <laughs> we. Um, I think the CHL rulebook is a, is a good place to start. I always find uh, having a lax rulebook when we're growing is a good thing. Uh, so obviously, you know, things like positional lock or stuff that we'll maybe we'll pull back on just to give players an opportunity. The biggest thing the ECHL brings to us as a league is it brings an opportunity to play. Like that's the biggest thing, right? You know, you look at the size of training camps in the AHL, 
and the training camps in the CHL, there's a lot of those like veteran and amateur players that just don't have the, like, they don't get to play the game, which is unfortunate. Right. So mm-hmm. um, that's, uh, that's what we're looking for. So. Yeah. And I'm just, um, we're actually getting questions in the shout box. I'm going to ask yeah, I have it open right questions. now too. So. I'll, yeah, uh, um, Greensold asking, uh, what would happen if too many amateurs pick CHL over ECHL? So this, that's a good question. So right now, how we're looking at it is um, we'll be updating the signups and keeping everyone informed of what's going on. And maybe we could t- potentially pull players out of the CHL training camps, put them in the ECHL, for an example, right? Um, when you go to sign up for the league and you have to select between the ECHL and the CHL, if the CHL is full, and you're not going to get an opportunity to play, but the ECHL is opportunity to play. I think the players just need to be notified and they'll need to understand um, what, uh, you know, what ends up happening, you know? So if you want to go, if you want to play hockey, ECHL may be the option uh, to go play right away because the CHL potential will be full, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's the direction it's kind of going. Um, and then on that same note, it's like, we wanted to give options because, you know, like a player like yourself that's been around for so long, if you decide next season you want to, you just want to be a player and you want to go play in the CHL, I don't want you to feel like you're stuck in the ECHL. You know, you have roots in the CHL. We wanted to give guys like you that have helped build the brand where the CHL is right now an opportunity to go back there and continue building on things that you've done. Yeah, for sure. And that's another great thing. I mean, like for like for someone that wants to, that's been down the sea for a long time, you know, they've been up in the A or the N, and they say, you know what, you know, I don't want to manage, but I kind of just want to have a relaxed season. I think I might go down to the EAC, e, or CHL. That's a nice opportunity. You know, you can go down there. Maybe times work better for you in one league than the other, which is also another question. Like, what would be the times for the ECHL unless that's not decided yet? Um, I... I kind of like to stagger them in the sense that, you know, NHL gets their ECUs from AHL. AHL will get their ECUs from ECHL. ECHL, ECHL gets their ECUs from a training camp. So that that being said, I'd like to see the ECHL, ECHL times just mimic a, a 9 and 10. Just a prime time, 9 and 10 o'clock. Um, that doesn't give – that gives them time to be able to be utilized in the AHL. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of players that are going to end up um, – end up going mm-hmm. from – uh, I guess going from the ECHL to the AHL because that'll probably be their, be, be their intentions to go there. Gives them opportunities to actually play at both levels. So, excuse me. So if an AHL team's having issues and they're requiring a lot of ECUs, it literally gives an ECHL player an opportunity to play six games a week because they'll be available. They can play three in the ECHL and actually play three as ECUs in the AHL. So I think nine and ten is kind of where we're sitting right now for ECHL game times, and that's you know we'll play it by ear when we have signups and we'll go from there. But nine and ten is kind of the tentative times right now. I like to see. Mm-hmm. Um, this is also actually a really good question for App, and we kind of uh, operation. We kind of touched on this a little bit. He said, "So, do you need three seasons to go to the ECHL? So, like, how many seasons do you need to have as a player to be eligible?" Yeah, so that's a, that's a really really good question. So there there has to be changes in some degree, right? So we're going to want our prospect players to maintain longevity in the CHL. We need them there a little bit longer. Um, in order to do that, we have to make adjustments to the script itself that will transfer an AHL, sorry, a CHL player um, from the CHL to the AHL or sort of from a prospect to an amateur. So that being said, it's roughly three seasons, uh, maybe a little bit less give or take, depending how deep you go. Um, the reason behind that is, is um, it, three seasons seems like a long time, but you guys are all draft eligible every season. So if you walk into the mm. CHL and you're a really good player, uh, maybe you only play one season, maybe you play half a season. And the next thing you go, uh, you're drafted and you're moving up, right? But the maximum you'll be able to play before you're not called up is three seasons. But the minimum could be half a season, 10 games, six games, all depends, right? So it really adds, it really adds uh, an aspect to the draft that we haven't seen before, which I think is really, really huge. You can do the trucks and you can get in. Second. Um, yeah, so that's, so yes, it is going to be about three seasons. Um, but that being said, uh, that'll give you in those three seasons, you'll hit the NHL entry draft three times. So mm. you get three cracks at it. Um, but that being said, nice. too, I understand that. Yeah, and I understand that, you know, that can be frustrating to hear these changes. And I understand that you know, people aren't going to be upset about that. We may lose some users. I get that. But in, lo- in the long term, this is something we have to do to make this work and make it function. And that being said, you know, the development team uh, and myself are looking at uh, each offseason to run a, a top prospects tournament, per se where we're going to take the prospect players, mm-hmm. potentially, you know, 45, 60 really good prospect players that had a great season in the, uh, in the CHL. And we're going to showcase them uh, via streams in a kind of a competitive, fun uh, prospects tournament. So we're going to try to get back to the CHL a little bit and it'll really help you guys showcase your skills so you can move up quicker. Um, 
so yeah, so yeah, that's a good question. So it's going to roughly be um, about three seasons in order to make the jump to amateur now. But that being said, uh, you'll have three cracks on your way to that amateur status to be drafted in the uh, NHL entry draft. NHL entry draft will give you eligibility to the NHL, AHL, and ECHL. Or you could actually return to the CHL for that season if the owner chooses to as well. Yeah, that's the really cool and new kind of feature. I know like with most players, you know, you had that one season as a prospect. If you didn't get drafted, you just didn't get drafted. Now you have three whole seasons to prove yourself, like a whole entire game's worth, like per se. Through NHL 17, you're down the East, you're down the CHL. You do okay the first two seasons, but then you just kind of break out in the third season. You get drafted. It's mm-hmm. kind of how it is, like in the real CHL, like your 16, 17, 18 kind of like age thing. And yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Cool. The other thing too, you got to keep in mind is, um, see, you're a brand new guy. Like you joined LG this week. You know, you're hyped about it. So you got a CHL ownership position. So maybe you're not. Um, the best player in the CHL, but that gives you an opportunity to bring in you know, maybe five or six of your close friends. So you guys can play in the league together, um, get them on multiple contracts. So we talked about how we want to add contracts to the CHL. So collectively as a group, if you don't get drafted, you guys get to play together uh, for multiple seasons and try to win multiple championships in, in the CHL. Now we haven't really seen um, that stability in the CHL that has allowed you to go to multiple seasons to win multiple championships on the same team. We see dynasties in the NHL and AHL all the time. So this new contract system and this tweak to the actual prospect will allow us to see more, um, more dynasties in the CHL, which will make the CHL more competitive as well. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, like you said, that's kind of, that's the kind of thing we see in the A and the N all the time. I mean, look at, teams like a team like LA who made the cup two years in a row in 16 uh Chicago and the AHL winning two cups in a row just winning one about a week ago Mm -hmm. um we're gonna answer a couple more questions that are going around the shout box right now I just saw a couple more go up uh glad L glad L asking um will there be a position lock in the CHL or the ECHL uh, ECHL, I'm, I'm assuming no, uh, just because of sign numbers. The first season probably will not. The goal is eventually get to position lock. I believe position lock really truly shows uh, the competition level in the league. Ideally, I'd like to see CHL to get to there as well, too, when you can only pick one position, stick to it, make that decision, and then build the team around that. It really adds a next level style of uh, competition to it. So we'll say probably for the first season of ECHL, uh, maybe for the first couple seasons of ECHL, we probably will not see a positional lock. Okay, and I know that was actually a question I think you had asked about two or three months ago if a position lock should be added to the CHL. Mm-hmm. So that's a really good question there, actually. Um, cabin uh, Fever. Oh, no, you go ahead. My bad. I was just going to say, um, we'll probably have the discussion again with our Season 25 CHL guys to see if they'd like to go positional lock. But it is something we are going to work towards in the future for sure. All right, yeah. Um, cabin Fever, um, I know we kind of touched on this, but like I said, there was a allow people to just start tuning in he said uh guys are curious as to how management between chl and e- echl will be decided sorry if we missed this uh, okay so Zeno is handling all the chl uh testing and application process as we speak uh once the echl management sele- uh, selections are posted for you guys to apply uh Zeno, titus and i will collectively be doing it together to select your echl managers all right um there's two more questions here that I'm seeing. Uh, Glad asking another question saying, so the NHL owners can control the AHL team if the NHL owner or AHL GM control the ECHL farm team? Uh, essentially, it'll be how the CHL is right now. So um, the AHL training camps will be made up of ECHL players. So in a nutshell, that's how, the, how it'll flow uphill to the NHL. Okay, and uh, our final question um, from Staple Operation, also asking this. This is probably one of the better questions, saying, uh, will any amateurs go back to prospects whatsoever, depending on the amount of uh, games? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So pretty much right now, um, which is this is going to be unfortunate to some people to hear, but uh, right now, if you were a prospect in season um, – sorry, season 24. So last season, if you were a prospect, if you did not – reach the set amount of games that's going to be in the new script and you are not drafted, you'll maintain your prospect status. Um, <laughs> like I said, I understand that that may not be the most popular uh, thing for some people to hear, uh, but at the same time, I do feel it's going to give the CHL uh, that stability it requires in order to keep growing. It also puts more competition level on our players. 
um, to compete harder to be able to get drafted because it's it's the quicker way out of the mm-hmm. CHL rather than playing the three season commitment that we are requiring moving forward. Uh, so yes, um, unfortunate to some, uh, you will maintain your prospect status, uh, but at the same time, I do feel that the it is you know the grass is greener on the on the other side. We're going to be able to offer you a better experience in the CHL than you've ever experienced before. Um, therefore, I think you know. Uh, people need to give this give this a try. Believe in the system. Believe in what we're trying to do here, and I think that uh, it'll be accepted really well. Yeah, that's the great thing too. I mean, you played that one CHL season. You didn't get drafted. You went back to the CHL again this season and played. I mean, you still you only have to technically play one more season. You get to go back into the draft again. So say you play really well in that one season, you get your name a bit noticed. You can go in the draft and possibly get a pick like that. So yeah, exactly. So th- that's what we said too. You no. Know, there's a lot of situations where players play 15 games, um, go to NHL bidding, don't get picked up, go to NHL bidding, don't get picked up. And then the back in the CHL anyways. Um, so this system will allow you to kind of build, grow, get better, uh, manage teams, get stronger, build chemistry, build the experience, and then try to work your way up. So I think I'm trying to give you more tools in the toolbox to be more successful long-term. So if you weren't drafted last season and you did get a bid in the NHL or the AHL, would this apply to you or no? Uh, no, we have other stipulations in there. So if you, uh, those players, it's stipulations based off of how many games they played. So 10 AHL games last season gets you amateur status. So even if you ECU 10 times last season, you technically will be an amateur. Uh, and if you have 10 NHL games uh, from previous seasons, so we have guys coming back from like, you know, prior to me being on LG. So 10 NHL games will actually get you amateur status as well too. Oh, wow. That's really sick as well. Um, yeah, it's, anyone... it's a grandfathering clause. You know, we have players that have played season 14, season 13, season 12, you know, that are now returning. Uh, so we want to be able to give those, get back to those guys as well too. So they can kind of be recognized for their, you know, their time served in LG. Yeah, for sure. Also, if anyone uh, has any more questions uh, before we uh, head out here, like I said, feel free to post it in the uh, CHL shout box. Um, ECHL, it's going to be a great league, I can tell for sure. Um, seems like you guys have really put a lot of thought and hard work into this and a uh, huge prop star staff too. I mean, you guys get taken for granted, but the job you do, it's not easy. You don't get paid for it. I mean, major props to you guys for um, no. just doing what you do to help. Yeah, you no, with it. yeah we appreciate it for sure. You know, we're, we're here just to give you guys the best experience you can possibly have, uh, meet new people, uh, build bonds, build teams, build chemistry. Uh, you know, LG offers so many different things for so many different people. So obviously, you know, if you want to build team chemistry and uh, work out really well and get good at the game, really good at the game, uh, next thing you know, you can work your way up to the pro series level and play for money. You know, we gave away four grand uh, not that long ago in pro series. And I think that we'll be able to uh, you know, really see uh, where everyone came from, where the roots came from. You know? Think about this too, you know, six, seven, eight, ten 10 seasons down the road, uh, potentially maybe you did do three seasons in the CHL and you, you, know, you really earned it. Next thing you know, um, mm. you're an NHL owner and you're running the show now, right? Or maybe your staff, or maybe you're something else. So I just think that uh, we're trying to give you guys uh, a lot of tools to be successful, give you the best experience possible, and really um, give you something that's competitive. And I think that uh, these new rule changes, the staff that we have in place, um, being able to communicate like this, you know, be able to do these shows, talk to you people, talk to the community, answer questions. I think this really gives back to the community and really gives them options, it gives you opportunity which is going to make the league and everything better for lg yeah and that's the great thing about it you know you build relationships you meet new people it's a competitive league um that's the great thing that's a, another reason to sign up i mean it's your virtual career you get to meet new people um it's just great overall um we have a couple more questions here in the shout box and um after this, we're going to probably go ahead and end it. Um, mr ranger 21 saying is there going to be any resigns for the echl to start the season uh, no, there probably won't be re-signs, uh, for a couple seasons in the ECHL. All right. And our last question from L. Howard, Sir L saying, will the new amateurs this season played 15 games already be reset back to a prospect? Well, I think we already answered that, but, um, yeah, they technically will be, mm-hmm. they'll tech, they technically will be based on the prospect script that's been uh, adjusted already. I believe we adjusted it yesterday. We just ran some numbers to see how it would actually affect uh, those people, I think it's actually only really affected roughly 200 signups because uh, we ran the numbers to see what we were at currently with the old script. And then when we reran it, we increased the prospect numbers by about 200 players. So, oh, wow. That's, that's really, that's really cool right there. So it's not, a, it's not a ton of people like last season in the CHL, there was a thousand and one prospects in the entire league. So out of those thousand and one prospects, 90 of them will get drafted. So that leaves us with roughly 900 players from last season mm. that could come back to play CHL for an additional year. 
Oh, wow. It gives people options as well, so that's another cool thing. Um, anyways, um, looks like that's all for the questions. Um, like Brody said earlier, this will be posted in case you didn't see it live. This will be posted in a thread that he will be posting a little bit later tonight. As he also said earlier, um, anyone interested in ECHL management, that will be a form as well later. Um, thanks to everyone that watched. Thanks to you for uh, coming on. Um, you have any final words that you want to say? Um, yeah, sure. I'll just touch on this. You know, I think this is uh, this is pretty cool. This is going to be a good thing for all of us. Um, like I said, I do realize that some of these changes do affect some people's plans for the season, and I understand that. Uh, I understand people are upset, but at the same time, I do believe it's going to drastically change how we handle things here. Uh, it's going to make the CHL more competitive. It's going to make the CHL a better place to play. And it also gives it an ECHL is going to be a new new brand, a new feel for everyone to kind of move up and go from there, which I think is going to be pretty key as well. Um, yeah, so that being said, I think that uh, all in all, this is going to be really good for the league and really good for everyone involved. So I'm hoping it'll all work out and I'll be able to touch on some uh, more details and certain things as we move, uh, as I type out my thread later on tonight and we'll link the video to answer some questions as well too. All right. Well, um, thank you for coming on. Uh, we really appreciate it. Kind of get some clarity to the uh, community about the league um, coming up in NHL 17. Um, thanks to everyone for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to watch out for anyone, any news that, um, McDonald or any of the staff give out about the ECHL. I know there's probably going to be a lot of stuff coming up, along with a couple of more things that will be coming up, I'm sure, for news. So uh, make sure to watch out for that. But anyways, uh, thank you for coming on McDonald. Um, thanks for everyone for watching live or for watching the uh, after it being recorded. So thanks to everybody. Um, hope you all have a good night. Thanks for watching.